can you both can have more time because only two have been registered on this. Okay, I, I'll try to be brief, but I'll be open to questions and we'll see what happens. Okay. <coughs> This is a MediaWiki extension entitled Working Wiki that I'm going to present. Uh, we already have it in use on upwards of 150 wikis, mostly at our site in Canada, mostly for academic research teams doing quantitative science. And I want to describe the extension project in a couple of different ways. Okay, the primary description is that it's a platform for collaborative open quantitative science research. Okay, it provides you a way to work together and maintain a, a revisioned archive of your data files, the code that processes your data files, the make files that control the code that processes your data files, the figures they produce, and the manuscripts that use the figures they produce. Right, so this is a platform for open and reproducible science because you've got your manuscript there before it goes to the journal, after it goes to the journal, together with everything that you need to do to reproduce all that work. Ready to be exported, um, tested out, run by third parties, and reused, remixed in further ways. That's open science. Uh, but I want to present you another description of the same project because it's actually really just a general purpose tool for transforming inputs into outputs. Right. Um, I'll show you. The sort of central interaction that happens when you use MediaWiki is that you write some wiki text markup, which is a specialized programming language. Can you bring the font size up a little bit? Yeah. I'll make it bigger. How's that? Okay. Sure. So you you write in the markup language, which is a sort of restricted programming language that doesn't do everything, but it does what it does, which is to give you a simple way to produce nicely formatted pages. It runs through the parser and it comes out as a nicely formatted page. Headers, bullet points, links. I write the syntax. I get what I ask for. Okay. You're not doing anything special to the media wiki syntax, are you? No, this is just media wiki. That, that was just media wiki. This here is not going to be. Okay. If, since it's an extension, I play nice and I just use a little angle bracket of tag like we're supposed to do with extensions. But what I put inside here is some other form of input. Okay, I will show you a .tech file, which is what we use in the quantitative sciences to write our manuscripts. So give me just a second to put this in here.
we're actually doing two different things at this point. What we've just done is we've translated it into HTML, so you can see it using a third-party tool called LaTeXML, which is quite good. But what you're ultimately going to want is a PDF. That's the standard. And you do that using plain LaTeX or PDF LaTeX or XD LaTeX. And that's going to happen when I hit the PDF link. That's, that's the standard dot tech output. And in other words, you're doing exactly the opposite of visual editor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Like you want source code, you get to do source code. That's right. Of course, I would like to be able to do this in the visual editor. That, that should be, be coming. Uh, visually editing, yeah. Well, there are full types that do that. We have a GSA More or less. Really? Yeah, cool. with the, the math part, right? The math part, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to try to deliver you full, full documents anytime soon. And so you, you, your tech rendering is completely separate from the media wiki rendering, and the hierarchy is different and so on. It's just, a, it's just an embed, uh, and it's its own document with its own structure. There's a whole back end added. Okay, it's you, you go into the media wiki parser, it hits these tags, it goes into my code, my code gets the source files, puts them into a working directory on the server, does the compilation there, does whatever it has to do, gets HTML, and puts it into the page on the way out. Why are you letting the, um, the, the author specify the file name um, separately from the title or anything else? Like, what is the purpose of the file name there? Well, the purpose of the file name is to place the file in a working directory full of files. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a general purpose documentation thing. So, um, we do whatever we can to actually try to transparently support people's existing projects. Right, so you can actually bring a directory full of source files into here and keep running it, as long as you have good make files for it. And when you do that, does then it automatically populate it back on the wiki? Like, how, did, so when, how does that When you work? import, it'll store the source file contents into the wiki storage. Okay. And when you compile, it'll populate them into a working directory and work with them. Okay. I guess an interesting question, the first question that came to my mind is why haven't you simply used source control? Uh, is there, the, uh, I take it that is the actual wiki workflow you wanted to add to the editing of the source itself, right? Yes, we want, we want the user interface of the wiki. So we're using the wiki itself as a sort of minimally featured revision control system for coding. If you want to have your revision control system outside of the wiki, there are some ways we can do that, but you don't get the interface convenience. So, so on, on that line, uh, if, you're, if you're using this mechanism as storage for all of your experimental data, yeah. uh, presumably you want to be able to import that and manage that automatically, not through, through UI. Uh, and it seems weird to have media wiki because uh, that's the thing to do uh, to streamline that automated import process. So, do you have a way around that? Uh, we have ways that you can work on your files on your desktop and get them back into the, the wiki for, for publication. If that's what you mean. But in that case, they're they're no longer they're virtual uh, they're raw files, so they're not version controlled anymore. No, it's essentially like checking out and checking back in, or uh, pulling your files and pushing them. Oh, okay, each yeah. file is, uh, yeah. is okay. tagged with, with uh, I'm actually, a given revision of a video experience. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually in the process of working on an actual Git helper so that you can literally pull your file and cool. push it back in. As long as we're doing the live demos, I'll just push my luck a little further and see how far I can get before anything screws up.
Okay. Okay, here, pending, you know, modulo mistakes, I've got uh, a very short computer program written in R, which is a lot of function. It's an R script, and it doesn't do anything on its own, right? I don't have an automatic way to make that an HTML output, but I have a way to request a particular output. Okay, I have a, have a built-in make file syntax to make that convenient. So if I just use the right file name, it'll actually give me the PNG output as well, okay? Let's use the shortcut for preview there. What shortcut? All should be. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Sit and preview all day. Although it's good to say, <laughs> which is all shift S. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Did it work? It worked. Oh. <laughs> all right. So this is actual computation in the preview edit preview cycle. Right. Uh, I'm just previewing. I'm just doing my work, and when I'm happy with it, I'll say. <laughs> Right, and uh, hopefully I want to edit conflict because I'm talking to my collaborators. There it is. <laughs> uh, just to, to wrap up real quick, I'm not going to take a few more minutes. I'll just do one more little mini demo and show you a couple of existing examples, and that's it, okay? Uh, just to sort of drive home the point that this is general purpose of computation and that you actually can do a lot more complex, deep things than what I just showed you. Give you a make file example. That's the next one. You know that's going to be in VE. We're going to have sentence highlighting in VE. There's someone working on it. I think you're not doing this on an open wiki. That's right.
it's, it's already living on my research wiki, getting worked on in the way that I just showed you. So it's a, it's a .tech file like I started out with. It's got uh, citations in it, which are handled by a .bib file. It's got math in it, which just handles itself. Figures here are coming from a fairly complex C++ simulation, which is being rerun as needed. Um, and we also have a way to do longer running jobs by submitting them to a cluster and merging them back in when they're done. So this is working wiki for open science, right? This is I'm maintaining this in a reproducible science way on the internet as I'm doing it. This is a real live example of the supplementary material that comes with a manuscript that's actually been published in the literature. You know, you, you, uh, you give them a link so that people can go and see the programs you use to get the results. And in this case, it's a link to a wiki page where the actual code is. And here's the actual code. The wiki allows us to embed the code in the wiki text discussion of what it does. So it's sort of self-documented. Yeah. We're seeing the source here, and we know the source gets executed. Is the source actually repeated in the Wikitech page, or do you, can you just like say, this is a, a source bit for this page, also show it? Yes, you put the source in the page, and you say, just show the source instead of showing something else, and it'll just okay. do that. Cool. Yeah. That's what was, what's happening here. Uh, actually, you saw that here when I wrote a make file, and I didn't oh. say anything special, it just right. shows you the make file. Although it actually gives you links to the files that make file mentions, but that's a little thing. This is a really similar example from a college course, right? It's the teaching material. Just put up a wiki page saying, look, this is how you have to write your, your programs. This is what's going to happen. This is what you need to do in order to do the class assignments. You just do it on a wiki page, so it's easy to read and easy to access. I have some other examples, but they're similar, so I'll stop there. Um, we, had, we had a side channel question about security, which is a concern, of course, but I, you know, I would not ever expect this to run on any kind of Wikipedia or anything, because not only because it's, you have to be really, really paranoid about the security, but also because obviously it takes up a lot of server effort. Um, it's designed for small wikis for, for research teams, uh, but since it's general purpose, I think it probably has a lot of potential to do other things, so I don't even know what it all is. You can use it for collaborative coding in general, uh, you know, computer science in the, in the industry, probably. No, I, yeah. I can lead you to a URL that parses some weird wiki text, including executing these languages. Yes. I, d I don't even need to have access to the wiki itself. Uh -huh. It can be in your internet. Okay. So all the stuff is inherently insecure. Uh, say again, what's the insecurity? All the stuff is inherently insecure. Because of what the reason? I missed it. Because I can trick you into executing whatever code I want without myself having access to your wiki. Uh, it's, it's only, it's okay if you, if we have, doesn't even have Caesar protection for preview, I think it does. I'm pretty sure. It does. Yeah. So, that, so that, that would be fine. You're saying that this is insecure because maybe your wiki is insecure. That would be a problem if that's the case. It's, if we do it properly, then it's probably not valid. Okay. If there is a, this, if there's a CSRF issue with editing, we should definitely. Well, preview. Yeah, preview. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Well, yeah. preview allows you to. Parse any wiki text, but only if you have CSRF access. Them, right. Yeah. yeah. Talk, but I'm talking about drinking someone who has access to the wiki. Yeah. That's a CSRF. Or a CSRF. A CSRF. So that would be something we have to fix. It's not yeah. the case issue. Our issue. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I can't claim to be more secure than media wiki. I'm pretty sure this. Uh, I think there's, I'll just I'll close up. I think there's potential to, to use this thing not so much as itself, but as a platform, 
as well, right? If, if you want to write, if you want to have a wiki where people can only can write Python scripts and nothing else, you don't have to implement it. You just use this and like you know restrict what people can do. Um, there's automated theorem prover wikis that you know th that's yeah. important, right? Yeah. It's it's yeah. sort of the frontier of um, uh, the foundational mathematics, uh, and it basically comes down to people editing uh, these theorem prover scripts, which are source files, and using bank files to to recompile things and find out what uh, dependencies have broken, right? It, you could probably write that in a week using this thing, right? You can use this to create other wikis. I don't even know what all the potential is, but I wanted to mention that. that, that I'll finish there. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it probably goes without saying, well, this is free software and you can install it right now. There's a stick here. Yeah.